Good morning, everybody. I have this very pleasant task to keep you awake for a moment before you are allowed to reward yourself with a cup of coffee. So I don't know if it's better to be bef right before the lunch or right before the coffee break. But anyway, uh, yes, I'm Heidi and uh, I'm uh, now discussing an an aspect of this endeavor, endeavor that we are doing together here uh, like a one, from one other side that we shouldn't neglect and we shouldn't forget. And it's seismic risk how we deal with that when we go and do things down there on the ground. Okay, so shortly first to introduce seismic monitoring in Estonia. And uh, in this country, it's arranged as such that it's uh, one sub-program of the state environmental monitoring program run by the Ministry of Environment. And this is a challenge, I must tell. Like, uh, it's, we count bats and butterflies and earthquakes and so what. And uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm very glad to be uh, contributing in this development that let's take seismology also seriously in Estonia. And at the moment, in fact, like uh, you have the rare chance to listen to the smartest seismologist of Estonia talking, because she's the only one so far. <laughs> well, I can assure you that this is, this is state of art. And uh, seismic monitoring in Estonia is performed by the Geological Survey of Estonia. And actually, that's the thing that uh, many countries uh, resort and rely on the geological survey when, uh, when monitoring earthquakes. Uh, like we are in good company, like in, uh, for example the United Kingdom and the United States of uh, America also run the seismic monitoring program through geological survey. And once, like the, everybody is around in this field, more or less right here, we are very, very grateful for lovely cooperation with international partners. Like uh, this is, this is the directly to my heart to have this Finnish-Estonian uh, meeting or conference together because this is another aspect uh, where, where we can really cooperate. Like uh, we have uh, several foreign partners because seismic waves don't care about uh, uh, any borders, like they travel through the whole uh, globe. So we have, to, we have to exchange data and uh, do cooperation. We have a lot of co cooperation with the German Research Center of Geosciences in Potsdam. But uh, today, like, I, I'd like to emphasize that the Institute of Seismology at the University of Helsinki is a, a very, very dear friend for Estonia in uh, seismic monitoring. And we do it, like I, I think everybody, GTK and the uh, and um, Geological Survey of Estonia, we do this in a win-win principle that, uh, that together, like one plus one is more than two. And that's the case with, uh, with in uh, seismology as well. So sh shortly, what we like, uh, this is a glimpse of uh, what we do today. But of course, uh, counting seismic risk, you need to go behind in the history. But uh, like uh, the daily bread in uh, Estonia is that you have something like 30, 40 seismic events per month. And it's m mostly blasting in uh, oil shale open mines and limestone quarries. And we have military operations, like you know, like uh, the Baltic Sea is stuffed full of uh, sea mines uh, during the, uh, from the Second World War and so on. And it's lots of cleaning up and uh, these events are seen also as uh, seismic events, like um, normally the marine forces would say we blast a mine tomorrow afternoon uh, close to Nysar and then, uh, then I can expect to detect it. And magnitudes are typically one to two, like it's, it's in the lower end, like uh, in Estonia, the threshold more or less is magnitude one. So it's uh, kind of, you have to focus a lot. And then we have a handful of earthquakes, like r roughly one earthquake per two years, and they are also magnitude typically one to two. And we occasionally have mine collapses as well, like in the oil shale, roof of oil shale mine collapses. And it's like, a, I, I, I don't know if uh, SD Energia people like me to write them an email. By the way, do you know that you had a collapse in your mine last Sunday around midnight? And then they go, can go and search for the hole in the ground 
like to identify it. But this is a bit like uh, I'm a, I'm like uh, the guy at the airport that is scanning your suitcases. Like uh, I I have to look very very sharply. Like there's every day it's just an, another deodorant bottle and, and just another shampoo, but. In a one rare clay case, it could be a bomb in the suitcase. Of course, the airport worker doesn't want to find it, but uh, my bombs are these uh, earthquakes, so I have to recognize uh, one, one once it comes. So it's like you have to be sharp. And why? Who cares? Another little earthquake uh, in uh, uh, Gela or another little explosion in Vasalem Makori, who cares? But it's like if you do seismic risk uh, statistics, you have to know like uh, who are sheep and who are goats, to be able to do, do risk analysis. So uh, just uh, as an example, uh, data from uh, last year, so it's mostly uh, blasts and there is one star that happens to be a collapse in uh, oil shale mine. And then the diamonds over, the, over there, they are earthquakes and uh, last year that um, in this, like I have a box around Estonia because when you monitor an area, you have to always have some some marginal around it. So we didn't have any mainland Est Earth Estonian earthquake uh, last year, but uh, this is more or less like a, you see a map like this if you bother to go to the database of environmental monitoring and dig up the, the reports I write every year. And we have like three triangles at the moment over there, and they are the permanent stations. And actually that's, uh, if you go pick a textbook of a seismology, it's beyond minimum. That's, it's kind of, I go to, like uh, I talk to my Belgian colleagues that we have three stations, how many you have? And they say, oh, we have, I think, 40. And Belgium, I think it's smaller than Estonia. But anyway, I'm very happy with our dear geological survey that is now uh, like uh, investing in seismology uh, like uh, better than ever. And all these, uh, these uh, brown squares, they are temporary stations with care from Finland. And now we have ordered uh, equipment that we start by and by like uh, filling it up. So we are getting better and better. And this, this is the paradox of a low seismic, seismic area that you have to have a tight network. Like if you have a few stations, you never detect anything. You, know, you don't have a clue. So try to convince the officials that give us more money that uh, otherwise you get nothing with uh, like, yeah, this is the thing. Once you do something, do it well or don't bother to do it at all. Anyway. Like uh, I had a seismic risk in the title, so there are two e aspects we should like know: seismic hazard and seismic risk. And I took like a, you know, Dr. Google in the form of Wikipedia did this slide more or less for me. But it's a thing that yeah, seismic hazard. This is this uh, probability of a natural. Uh, earthquake occurring, like we have certain region, like let's say Estonia, and we have a time window, let's uh, say in another 500 years, and we want to statistically know that uh, what, what, are, what is the risk that we have a certain um, um, uh, acceleration of ground is uh, exceeded during that period, because acceleration is the thing that uh, like uh, collapses your houses and constructions. And uh, seismic risk is the damage that may happen from these uh, hazardous seismic events. And that, that is something that uh, we can uh, like calculate. And uh, the last sentence is important, that if we have some certain uh, type of seismic hazard, naturally, if we build our constructions well, if we take into account that in this region we have events like this, then we can mitigate a lot. And just for illustration, there, there are two maps from the European seismic hazard model of uh, the statistics that you have this uh, several hundred years of period and uh, what is the likelihood in a certain amount of years that something uh, shaking of certain level uh, uh, is exceeded and this map just illustrate that uh, we are quite be much better off than Italy or Tur Turkey or Greece in this sense. But anyway, it's something that you need to assess. It's not only that uh, we think we don't have earthquakes. Okay, so this, uh, what is the challenge uh, by us is that, um, that um, we need a very, very long period to get the complete picture. Like if I say that I'm, I'm uh, like uh, I need to wait two years for in average get one earthquake. So out from one data point, you don't do very much. So it's in fact uh, in our region, like you need literally several hundred years 
to cover or get kind of a complete picture. picture. And the thing is that uh, historical data, that's like a, normally you have uh, observations by people of earthquakes in places where people exist. Like if you have uh, some wilderness, the pro most likely there are no historical earthquakes in wilderness because nobody ever observed them. And of course, did you write it down? Was it really an earthquake or was it actually frost? or whatever, or in, in, even in history, earthquake. Earthquakes uh, shakes for several reasons. They didn't think that, oh, yeah, ah, you mean this, like two blocks of faults on, in the uh, basement are moving, uh, that sort of, okay. no, 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 it was a thunderstorm earthquake. Why didn't you like ask? Anyway, but in Estonia, instrumental era is uh, very short. So this uh, instrumental data is more reliable than human data, but we don't have uh, very much of that. And just uh, like, uh, for illustration, like uh, two data points. Oh, by the way, how much time do I have? I because I, I, this is my favorite topic. I may <laughs> venture in uh, deep in history or wherever. Like I just took uh, two juicy data points. Like um, for uh, like uh, I'm I'm cleaning up the catalog of historical earthquakes, and it's uh, like you thought, ah, oh, this is just piece of cake, and it's like I cannot swallow this piece of cake. It's so big. Anyway, like uh, there was an earthquake in Wormsi. Actually, this uh, Osmussar, uh, Wormsi, Hiuma, Hapsalu area is the seismic area in Estonia. And in fact, uh, Bruno Dos, a geologist in uh, Riga Polytechnics, he was, uh, he was the compila compilator of the, the historical uh, catalog of Estonian, or oh, like, uh, 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 how you call this, uh, Baltic uh, governments of uh, German, uh, this uh, cultural room, anyway. And he was interested in earthquake in Oslo in 1904, magnitude 5.4. It was felt widely in Baltics. And he made an announcement that uh, could people give observations. And uh, instead, oh, instead oh, he got a lot of that information, but he got a letter from a brewer from Haapsalu. And he, he, who wrote that, in fact, I'm, I don't really have anything to say of this Oslo earthquake, but, but there was an earthquake in 1877, and I wrote all down, I, he had lots of observations, but, but I just thought that I'm just a humble brewer, so what do I know about geology? And he never sent a letter, but then uh, the Oslo earthquake prompted him to send a letter about this uh, earthquake that actually was a mighty earthquake in this area, but it was never ever recorded in any catalog in, uh, otherwise. So it's half accidentally we got this. And then this Kerry earthquakes, this, this was a hilarious thing. This have been uh, like, uh, how you call it? Is it ghosting? Like you have something, uh, no, no, haunting. Haunting in, uh, in the catalog of uh, Nordic earthquakes for uh, decades. And um, I once, I was uh, having lots of earthquakes in my, my, my screen and a colleague at the geological server, he walked past the, why do you have uh, this Kerry dots in your map, because everybody knows there were no real earthquakes, they were explosions, uh, like uh, when they were lighting the lighthouse with gas and something went badly wrong. Uh, I see, really? And then, that, uh, please, Nordic seismologists, don't ever, ever use these uh, earthquakes again. And in fact, contemporary newspapers tell they were glass, gas explosions. Bruno Dos wrote about gas explosions, but the later generations ignored this info. So anyway, if you go ahead in the catalog, like uh, this is a light color, it's macro se seismic, what means that, um, that only human observations. So the old catalog that I can rely goes to 19th century. And then uh, until 19, oh, 1931 is the la latest one. And then a gap until the big Osmussar earthquake in 1976. It's absolutely impossible that there was no single earthquake from 1931 to 1976. Of course, we had World War II and all these things. So it's, it's uh, certainly it's a gap. But then the dark colors, they are instrumental. So it's kind of, uh, you are getting more and more data. And then if, if I draw a map out of this, so you have uh, dots, some uh, like uh, orange dots more reliable than the gray dots, but it's still like, uh, don't uh, fool yourself to think it's a complete picture. And then this is just uh, showing an ex uh, example of like, I, I was calculating uh, or doing uh, like seismic risk or sort of uh, pre-study for uh, possible uh, 
nuclear waste deposit in, uh, in, uh, in the Baltiski area or like in Lane Harju municipality. And this is uh, just, uh, let's not go in details, but you can try to do statistics that cum cumulative number of earthquakes in a certain period. And it's uh, like, uh, you can see it's lots of gaps and uh, it's kind of, you, you get the very hazy picture. But uh, you, you have uh, like, uh, there are tools that you can use for uh, uh, assessing seismic risk and then uh, there is uh, like one way is doing like this uh, seismic source areas and in fact in this work that is uh, a project called seismic risk uh, going on in, uh, in Finland, I will introduce it a bit later, so this is a pre-taster for it. So you, you do this kind of, uh, you put geology, you put seismology, you put geophysics, everything and you try to uh, get uh, like areas where in this area more or less seismicity is of this nature. So, for example, we have the area of Estonia here in a couple, couple of bits. And anyway, like you, you calculate the statistics of seismic risk in this area. So another approach is here that uh, this is from work from uh, Jouni Saari, who used to work for uh, nuclear power plants in uh, Finland. And he did this approach that you have this uh, like uh, seismic active areas. And uh, I, I could uh, like emphasize here is this Åland, Baltiski, Pihkwa uh, major shear zone that can be like, uh, it was nicely visible in uh, Kalles, uh, uh, this crystalline basement map, that it's, it's an area that uh, is like a geological uh, big fracture and it's actually seismically active as well. But anyway, like uh, these kind of things, you calculate statistics, that what, what is the frequency of like, if you have a certain magnitude, like without going in details, like, uh, magnitude 4.5 was the Osmussar earthquake, uh, so you can count that, of course, you, uh, small earthquakes uh, have shorter return periods than uh, big ones. And uh, I just want to kind of have an advertisement that there is a fresh uh, Finnish uh, Estonian or Estonian Finnish cooperation paper we got just out is uh, four recent earthquakes that we geologically analyzed and what, uh, what uh, comes into picture is that uh, they are like in this global, uh, plates are moving. It's, it's kind of echoes from uh, Atlantic pushing us. And uh, why, why to tell this is that uh, now finally we are getting into this, that we have this crystalline basement map and the more we do seismic measurements, we can, we can start doing this, that we have an earthquake and we locate it well and we can identify that, uh, yeah, it's very possible that this earthquake really, it occurred in this fault and it was a left lateral, uh, like uh, this uh, uh, northwest southeast movement. So this is one piece in the puzzle of what we do, and like more knowledge of our crystalline basement. Anyway, this this is an important slide. Like uh, we have seismic risk of natural earthquakes, okay? But we are doing human activities. Everybody still, let's do deep drill holes over here. They are doing deep uh, drill holes in Finland. And there comes this thing that you may start causing earthquakes or so-called earthquakes uh, induced seismicity yourself. And if you do underground constructions, like uh, you can even make an, uh, one underground construction worried about another underground construction. Like we have an example, a real example in uh, Pakri Peninsula that there are plans to do this pumped hydro uh, energy plant, like uh, make a huge cavity underground, pump water in there and use it for, uh, for like uh, energy production. And about in the same area, when you throw a stone over there, there might or will be a, a deposit for nuclear waste. And if you start uh, causing little earthquakes in, uh, in this uh, hydropower plant, and uh, everybody in the town of Baltiski knows that over there we have nuclear waste, there are very little, uh, not very uh, radioactive, but anyway, like in your head, it gets like when your Soviet blockhouse starts shaking and you know these two things, you, you might become unhappy. And you, we know like this social acceptability, it's a very important thing, like because nobody wants anything anywhere or, or everything should be there somewhere else. Like the waste deposit and the mine, they should be there somewhere else. So let's not mess this up because this a low seismicity country is such a country people are not used to tremors. And if you live in Paltiski and you have like sea mine, for example, somebody blasts a sea mine and you mistake it as an earthquake and rumors start to go 
And if you if if wrong people talk about like let's say a company represented talks of it, ah yeah, they just try to like uh, fake it. Like we have so much fake in this world. So th this is kind of like. Uh, uh, to start with, let's uh, de let's uh, deal with this aspect. Maybe we, we never need to foray. Maybe we never get in a big enough uh, shaking of, of any any of these geothermal wells or anything. But uh, let's be in the safe side. So our dear friends in Finland got money from the uh, Academy of Finland to make a project called Seismic Risk, where if you read the Lowest line is that the Geological Survey of Estonia is one of the international co-operators. And this is, this is the thing that uh, normally when you do seismic risk, you do it for a, some com commercial enterprise. And it's their data. You cannot use uh, uh, data from uh, one client to another client. But this is uh, open access, uh, uh, like public uh, like, uh, thing that when the product is ready, and I'm glad to say that luckily Estonia is so, so close to Finland, uh, Estonia is completely included in this. Like when the product is done, we have the data as for ourselves as well. So the, the motivation of this is to do like, uh, look at urban environments uh, that we have the natural risk and then we have the possibly we cause some, like in Helsinki area, they, they have little earthquakes because of uh, the geothermal uh, like a uh, deep geothermal wells. So it's, uh, it's kind of uh, what you have and uh, how, how does it, uh, how, how to deal with it, the society. And one is that uh, like the officials and the decision makers, the cities and the state, like who, who is responsible, who gives uh, permission of uh, doing things and how. Like uh, I think it's a bit, uh, I maybe confusion is too much, but it's kind of getting, uh, it's, uh, blocks are going in the right places, that what should like uh, officials, uh, what sort of report they resort to if they need to give a permission for a certain power plant or not. And, uh, and this is a new thing and uh, let's, let's like uh, work out the tools for everybody and everybody happy in this, uh, like uh, ordinary people and the decision makers and the entrepreneurs. Uh, and this is something that before we have any single uh, advance in Estonia in this, like, uh, like let's not reinvent the wheel. Like uh, whatever knowledge uh, fins with the lots of more resources, uh, like uh, figure out in Finland, let's just ape them like in a nice way that uh, we, we can uh, like take the procedures or take the good practices uh, directly for here uh, so that uh, things uh, work out nicely. And I think this is next to last slide. Like this is just deja vu. Has somebody seen the slide like this? This is a test. That did you sleep through my talk? Actually, this is the, just, the, just to emphasize that these are these aspects that we have low natural uh, seismicity, but we, are, uh, we want to do more human activities. We probably might cause something, maybe we don't, but we should, uh, we should be prepared if something happens and then so that everybody will be happy in all, uh, all levels, all stakeholders uh, would, uh, would uh, agree that this is the perfect way. Like you, if you know our uh, current horrible political situation in the world, we need to, we need to use all the chances to, to like, uh, be self-sufficient. And just to let your eyes rest in the, this is the latest baby in the family album of uh, instrumentally detected Estonian earthquakes from the year 2020, so I think this year we should have the next one. And it was right under the uh, town of Väikkemaari at depth of six kilometers or so. I even wrote them a letter and saying, did you know you had an earthquake? And nobody ever replied to me, so probably they didn't feel it. But this is, uh, this is uh, actually, this is also Finnish-Estonian cooperation. It's, it's two stations in Estonia and one in Helsinki. So I'd like to finish up over here. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Heidi. <clears throat> I've actually got a first question. So uh, you, uh, very simple, I guess. Are there caverns underneath Estonia? Actually, the, the, the interesting thing is that I'm... I'm uh, uh, coming into the, like, I need to write a, write a paper out of that, that the, in fact, in 100 years back, the knowledge, knowledge or understanding was that in Baltic states, the, there are only limestone collapse cavities. Like there are no tectonic earthquakes whatsoever. If there is something, it's uh, Gulf of Finland. And that has biased the minds of uh, Estonians 
or like people in this region, that you don't see a real earthquake because you don't understand it's a real earthquake. You think it's a collapse. So actually, it's very, very rare case. Like I think there is a case from uh, Latvia, a real uh, collapse. Collapse, and of course, it causes. <coughs> uh, like uh, we have uh, instrumentally detected collapse of the uh, sea cliff or this Baltic cliff uh, close to Toila. So anything that does this, like a roof of oil shale mine, you record it and you have a different signal. You you can make a difference of a collapse earthquake and then then uh, like faulting earthquake. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Please, Margus. Okay. Uh, actually about cavity and collapsing, and uh, it's just a comment. Um, uh, I was living in Spain a long time, and 2011, uh, in the South Spain, was a city of, it still is, city of Lorca. You can find from Google. And there was an earthquake, earthquake more than, f it, it was 5.2 or 5.4, and 11 people died. And it was caused by collapsing. Because there was a, a cavity in, but uh, what was the reason of the cavity? Farmers, excessive using of uh, groundwater for mm -hmm. farming, and uh, I, there was a cavity and cavity collapsed and, and caused the earthquake and uh, 11 people died. And the uh, second thing we didn't practice at home. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I didn't ask him that if nobody <laughs> asks, please ask something. That <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, not about Estonia, but uh, about Finland, about the back background and uh, Finnish seismic risk. And uh, actually, this is a Wikipedia question. And you know the biggest earthquake in Finland, how, how strong or big it was? I think that there are historical earthquakes in, in at the end of uh, uh, Gulf of Botnia. That's that's the seismic area in yeah. uh, in Finland. But what is the precise magnitude? Uh, I, did you check it in Wikipedia? From no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I, I yeah, you, you could have given me the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, <laughs> okay. no, that's too little because there, there was uh, like in Lapajärvi there was I think 3.9 or something. But I think the historical ones are larger. Yes, uh, I'm. Uh. I'm not. Uh, a seismic expert, but I have been working with uh, uh, one of our guys there, Jon, and mm -hmm. they are looking at this region, which is mm -hmm. uh, close to Kolisma. I'm not sure if it's the mm -hmm. same place that you're talking. Mm -hmm. It's not in the Gulf, but it's in the Karelia region. And there is mm -hmm. a region there with uh, 3.6 uh, mm -hmm. earthquakes. I'm not sure if there is but more the three, magnitude. Yeah, 3.6 is very easily possible in Finland. But yeah, the, the message in this is that always, whatever we do, that if we change the stress field of the uh, base rock, we, we always have a chance to induce earthquakes. And uh, we, we can, for example, there might be an earthquake in waiting who would have been uh, decided to sh uh, shake uh, uh, 300 years later, but it's activated earlier. Or we create, uh, like, uh, it's, it's uh, lots of issues, like actually induced seismicity is the thing that uh, should be taken seriously, as Marcus said in the example from Spain. Mm. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Everybody wants their prize of their coffee, I think. In it, um, you know, Finns are the most coffee drinkers in the abs whole world. Absolutely. I, that, <laughs> that I'm very well aware of. And uh, <laughs> most happy <nature>. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. yeah, they, there is a correlation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Andy. Thank you. <clears throat>